Well, have you ever asked yourself this question? How in the world did I get here? How in the world did I get here? Maybe you woke up one morning. (laughs) This was in your pre-Jesus days. You woke up, how in the world did I get here? And who is that next to me right there? How in the world did I get here financially? How in the world did I get here relationally? How, how do we get here? How do we get here as a married couple where we can't even look at each other without wanting to kill each other? How in the world did I get here? You ever asked yourself that question? How in the world did I get here with my teenage kids? My toddlers. I prayed for kids all the time and now they're two. And now I'm wondering how did I get here? I've thought about this a lot. I woke up one morning, actually it was in the middle of the night It was around 4 a.m. in my college days. I'll never forget it. Do you know how, you have those memories where it's almost like a snapshot and and it's always in your mind from a specific time period of your life? And I remember being on this bed. It was kind of pinned up against this wall. You know, college people, like (laughs) there wasn't a whole lot in the room and it, it was disheveled, and I remember laying on my bed, and that's what I was asking myself the question. How in the world did I get here? I mean, my life is an absolute disaster. I'm waking and baking and fornicating, doing stuff that I would have never dreamt of doing completely disconnected from God. And my life was just heading, it was like almost like I'm, I was in a movie on a train, like going down a set of tracks and I couldn't get off of it. How did I get here? You ever been there? <laughs> the Israelites in our story in 2 Kings, it's exactly what they're asking themselves. And it was years God was trying to get their attention, just like me. And because of our stubbornness and their stubbornness, they continued to stiff arm God and continued down that track of life. And tragically, I mean, we're talking years of God sending prophets, sending people, trying to get their attention. And just like many of us, no, I got it. No, I got it. I'm gonna do my own thing. I got it. I got it. And then he sends this crazy, evil Assyrian empire to come lay siege to the northern 10 tribes of Israel and eventually takes them captive back to Assyria. And I'm just picturing them like as, and it's so, you'll see it. it I mean, it's tragic. They, they have fish hooks in their nose and like chains and they're stripped naked and they, they march to Assyria from Israel. Can you imagine how embarrassing that would be? And I'm imagining as they are on this walk of shame and guilt and just like, I mean, the worst case scenario, it's like I was in my bed and, and they're, I, I just picture them walking this walk of shame and here's their mind, how did I, come on, say it with me. How did I get here? How did I get here? How did we get here? I was reading this, and this was so like, it, it, honestly, it was kind of tough for me because I was brought back to my pre-Jesus days. And I could see so many things that God was trying to do to get my attention until I hit that point. I wanna just share a little bit about this disaster. Speaking of disaster, you can, let's just start it. 2 Kings 17, let's, let's start in verse seven, shall we? Let's talk about this disaster. 
And what we're really gonna do today is we're gonna see how they got here. And this could be good for you and I um, because you could be uh, heading for that disaster just like I was, and this could be a wake-up call. Some of it, some of us, we've already turned to Christ, but if we're honest, we're kind of teetering back, and so this will be a good refresher. And some of us, it'll actually give hope that even though the disaster is in your life right now, there's a different response, and there's still time. Look at verse seven, 2 Kings 17, verse seven. This disaster, someone say disaster. <laughs> this disaster came upon the people of Israel because, simply, they worshiped other gods. What's the first commandment? You shall love the Lord your God. That's it. You shall have no other gods before me. Simple. That's why I love church. What is our, what's our whole mission? Love God supremely, and then he'll love people supernaturally through you. Simple. They worshiped other gods. They, they sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them safely out of Egypt and had rescued them from the power of Pharaoh. You guys remember that story, the Exodus? Crying out for 400 plus years. How do we get ourselves in this? <laughs> God, can you help us? And God, by his grace, sends Moses, leads the people through the Red Sea into the promised land. And what did he say, by the way, when they rolled into the promised land? Hey, man, when you get over there, there's gonna be these interesting people. They're gonna be serving all these other gods. And I'm gonna give you 10 commandments that's gonna help you live a great life. Please don't go the way of these other folks. It, you're gonna invite disaster on yourself. Gave them that very clear warning, just like our parents do when, hey man, like just don't go running into the street. I got something better for you. We're like, yeah, whatever. And we just do the exact opposite. Maybe that was just me. <laughs> and they followed the practices of the pagan nations the Lord had driven from the land ahead of them, as well as the practices the kings of Israel had introduced. They were in a predicament. They were in a pickle. They were wondering, how on earth did I get here? Are you wondering that today? How did I get here? How did I get here? I heard about this God. I knew that there was this God out there, but I still wanted to do my own thing. And now I'm in this state of disaster. Number one, if you're a note taker, write it down, repeated. Now, they got into this place, it wasn't right away. And that's what I love about God. Isn't God patient? Anybody just grateful for the patience of God in here real quick? Holy smokes, I can't believe he still works with me. These are repeated warnings that, that the Lord had given. Now, now look over to verse 12. 2 Kings 17, now, now check out verse 12. Yes, they worshiped idols despite, here it is, <laughs> the Lord's specific, very clear, specific and repeated, underline that in your Bible, repeated warnings. That hit me. And then verse 13, again and again, the Lord had sent his prophets. Remember how many prophets he sent during this time, I mean, it's over 200 years. Remember, the, the land of Israel started off great, you know, Saul, and then David, and then Solomon, and then they had how many kings over so many years? And those kings just kind of went haywire, doing their own thing, and God sent prophet after prophet warning them, hey, come on now, come back to the Lord. How about Hosea, by the way? Do you guys <laughs> read Hosea? God told Hosea, yeah, go marry Gomer, the prostitute, and have some kids. Like, what? What is that? And then Gomer's gonna leave you and then go chase her down and you're gonna marry her again. You know what he was showing? He was showing the picture of spiritual adultery is what he was saying. He was trying to get their attention. How about Elijah and Elisha? How many times did Elijah and Elisha like, just do wild stuff proving how awesome God is? They're like, yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna do my own thing. Repeated, he sent the prophets, seers, he, to warn both Israel and Judah. Turn, I underline that, turn from all your evil ways. Obey my commands and decrees. Obey and live, I got a better plan, man. 
the entire law that I've commanded your ancestors to obey. Not, not as like, you know, throw salt in your game, you know, douse your, your party. I'm giving you these because I, I made you. I know how life works. And I gave you through my servant, the prophets. Pause there real quick. I can identify with the prophets. In fact, I... I had this Bible study prepared actually for probably three or four weeks and I tried to wiggle out of it this week because <laughs> I'm like, the people don't want to hear, they want to hear life's good, it's all going to work out, I'm cool. But isn't it interesting, sometimes as a, as a person, sometimes I like when a coach gets up in my grill. Anybody here, like anybody like to be coached? Could you, can you just say, I like to be coached, just wave your hand real quick. I'm just, I'm willing to be coached. All right, the front row here, All right, come on. Anybody in the back over here, I'm willing to be coached. And, and I was like, no, and the Lord just spoke to me. Okay, you know what? This week, refusal, talk about it. Next week is revival. This week, talk about refusal, lean into it a little bit. And so, but let me just talk about, I, I like the patience of God. I was, I was thinking about if I'm God, and I graciously led a people to form the, the United States of America in 1776. And how, how has it been 246 years since this great country was started on the grace of God, on the word of God? Is that, is that the right math somewhere around there? Math, so let's just round up to 250. Okay, 250. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, if I'm God, and just little by little, the people I made, I've poured out so, so much grace and favor, it's, it's such a prosperous land. And little by little, we're just, us, the created, are chipping away and taking out God from the equation. Let's take out prayer from the schools, check. Let those 10 commandments, don't be telling me what to do. Let me just try to dismantle those. Let's have freedom everywhere except for Jesus. Don't say Jesus anywhere. You can, have, you can free, free to say anything else, but not Jesus and God. <laughs> Let's work on that dollar. In God we trust? No, in Todd we trust. Let's take that off. I'm just picturing myself, and I'm like, God, I'm like, he's so, anybody just grateful for his patience? And he, I, I feel like right now, it's like, it's, it's around 200 years that God was patient. He was trying to get his people's attention. And now we're at 250, Americans. And we just continue to go down this road. And listen, I'm, I'm not pointing fingers. I, I'm, I'm chief of sinners. I'm the one he's trying to get, <laughs> my, he's trying to get my attention too. For, for that long, repeated, repeated <laughs> warnings, over and over. It's kind of like, um, you ever have a boss that puts you on a performance plan? <laughs> like, you, know, you guys even know what that is? Like, he gives you clear instructions, she does, on what your job description is. This is how it's gonna work. This is how you're gonna thrive. And you're like, yeah, whatever. And, and you miss it. And your boss comes to you humbly and goes, you, you know, I love these type of bosses, by the way. They go, I mean, I love you. You're an amazing person. You could really thrive in this company, this organization. But what, here's what I've noticed lately. And here, here's the, here's the three things that we gotta get improved over the next six weeks. Otherwise, you're telling, your, you're telling me you don't wanna work here anymore. Don't you love those bosses, by the way? They give you the opportunity. I feel like that's what, I feel like God was doing it for repeated. He's like, yo, um, I love you, I know how life works, I made you and stuff, Here, here's how it's really gonna work out. Come on, man, I, I believe in you, come on, man, come on, turn, let's go, I believe you can do it, come on. I feel like that's maybe what he's saying to someone in here right now, just, just come on, man, I believe in you. I know that you've stiff-armed me for years, but I believe in you, come on, I'm still giving you an opportunity. Do you have breath in your lungs right now? I'm still giving you an opportunity. Repeated. Repeated. Maybe, maybe I'll give it, <laughs> try to give a picture to you guys of how I see this. What I have right here is a, they call it a shock collar. And I just need one volunteer real quick. 
It's the new people right here, okay. <laughs> and this actually worked really good. Um, we had a dog back in the day. His name was Dulos, which actually in the Greek means bond servant. <laughs> it's just completely wrong. He wasn't at all. Bond servant means like I willingly give my life to Jesus. No, that wasn't the case. So we just had to train. It's so interesting, by the way. So many of us humans, isn't it weird how we're born? And we, no one has to teach us how to say no. No. Share your toys. No. Come on. No. We have to train Yes. And what I've found is most of us humans, until we submit and we're trained by the Holy Spirit through the shot collar, most of us will just continue to just go down our own way. So, repeated. Someone say repeated. So, one of the features on this collar, still no volunteers, huh? Should I put it on myself or something? No. So, what's really brilliant about this is you put it around the dog's um, neck, Color. And when you are trying to train them, like you don't want them to get killed. Like I had a neighbor that their dog was always trying to get out of the fence and, and just ran and actually tragically got, got hit on a major highway by, by a car. And you think about a gracious God's like, you know, I'm gonna put the, the shock collar on. And the beauty is when the, do- when the dog or the human <laughs> starts going, like doing their own thing, there's a little beep. You don't even have to shock first. There's no pain involved. It's just a beep. Beep, beep. That's how kind and gracious the Holy Spirit is. You're walking down. You're about to get into this relationship. You know that's not right. You're about to open up your phone and look at something in a weak moment that you shouldn't. You're about to make a financial decision that you shouldn't, that I shouldn't, right? And what is it? Beep, beep. Beep, beep. And here, here's, here's a lot of us humans. I'm telling you, Dulo, I, I felt so bad for Dulos because I'm like, yo, Dulo, I'm, I'm trying to give you grace, baby. I'm trying to give you grace, dog. And I mean, do you mean dog? <laughs> beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> so then <laughs> they actually had levels. <laughs> so you go level one, it was just a little zing. I'm picturing God like with Israel, just like, beep, beep. Nah, stiff and neck, I'm gonna do my own stubborn. Beep, beep, think. Can anybody relate to me right now? Am I the only one right here? <laughs> I, I'm so tired of myself, I mean... I just wish I could be a dog without a shot collar. (laughs) I remember growing up, I remember being a teenager, and my mom, God bless her, I, man, her patience, by the way, just the patience of God through my mom. Oh, jeez. Could you imagine just looking at me like, really? Beep, beep, sing, sing, sing. (laughs) I remember I was shooting hoops in, in the front, front driveway and some random guy just stops right in front of my driveway and comes up and he's like, hey, God's got a better plan for your life. I mean, this dude started just unleashing, just preaching right to me. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> beep, beep, repeated. Like, just, he's got something better. Nah. If I give my life to Christ, I'm a geek, I'm a nerd. I can't have fun in life. That's for the lamos that can't do anything else in life. Not me. I'm cool. Get the girls. I play sports. Look at me. (sighs) Repeat. I mean, I'm telling you, the repeated time and time and time again. And God's like, okay, that was the beep beep. Now I'm gonna have to level one zing. I remember driving home. (laughs) Jeez. I go to Iowa State. I was 0, 10, and 1 my sophomore year. Talk about pain. <laughs> Congratulations to Nebraska fans, by the way. Good job. Good job. Good job. Love it. Love it. 
I remember in, we had a spring practice, got knocked out, and on the way home, I'm driving on I-80, I had to get home to some high school dance or something, and black out as I'm driving in my little Ford Ranger, black out, take out a sign and come to a stop right before this huge ravine where I, it would have been curtains, y'all. And God just, he, what did he do? <laughs> beep, beep, zing, zing, zing. He's going, he's just, he's patiently going up levels, trying to get my attention because he's like, I believe in you. There's something better for you. I created you. I know how life works. I want something better for you. And, and if you won't listen to the beep, beep, now I gotta go zing, zing. Wouldn't you have thought, like, stubborn Todd would have been like, golly, thank you for your grace. I can't believe that I almost died and missed out on all this great life that you've given me. I'm gonna turn and repent and just follow you, Jesus. No. Repeated. 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 Just clear. Repeated. 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 But what did I do? Number two, I refused. Verse 14. Maybe you can relate. Verse 14, but the Israelites would not listen. Sounds like some of your kids, doesn't it? (laughs) They would not listen. They were as stubborn as their ancestors who had refused. There it is. There's the word. Circle it. Underline it particularly if you're like me and you really struggle in this area, who had refused to believe in the Lord their God. They rejected his decrees and the covenant he had made with their ancestors. They despised all his warnings. They worshiped worthless idols. That word for worthless in the Hebrew is hebel. It's an interesting word. It means empty or vain. It's like empty calories, you know? It's like when you're like, my life will be fine as long as I get that donut over there. And then you eat it, and it's worthless. That's basically what it is. (laughs) Worthless idols say they became worthless themselves, vain. They followed the example of the nations around them, disobeying the Lord's command not to imitate them. We're my stubborn people. Just wave at me real quick. Just yesterday, it was funny, uh, we were at a, a gym and we got a meal to go and I asked my wife, can you go grab a bag? She's like, oh, no, you can just put it in here. And I'm like, no, that'll get your meal hot. Like, no, just go grab me another one, please. She's like, no, I, no it's okay. I can just put, I say a bit. And what did I do? I just went and got it myself. <laughs> and she looked at me, she's like, you are so stubborn. I'm like, yes, I am. But listen, good leaders are stubborn. They just need to sanctify their stubbornness. That's what I believe. (laughs) I just didn't want her to have a hot meal that was supposed to be cold. Stubborn. And you see it. You'll see it this week when it's time for bedtime with your kids, parents. Hey, time to go to bed. And what they're just trying, they're trying to squeak another minute out somehow, aren't they? Come on, moms, talk to me now. They're just stuck, stuck, stuck. That's so weird. The longer I go in this life, this is so true. Stay, stay with me. Everybody still with me? Everybody still with me? The longer I go in this life, the greatest quality a human being could possess is humility and coachability. I, I'm telling you, there's so many disasters that could be prevented if it wasn't for just straight pride. If you look at the word pride, what is the, what is the letter that's right in the middle of it? I. refuse. I refuse. I don't care how many times I pull a hamstring. I don't care how many times I get a concussion. I don't know how many times. It doesn't matter. 
I'm gonna do it my way. And it starts as a little baby, then it gets to be a toddler, and then I get a teenager, and then I'm a full grown adult talking about I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do. It's the greatest blessing that God gives us, free will and free choice, but it's also the greatest curse at the same time. Sometimes I just want God to be like, no, sorry, the stuff that you wanna do that's all evil, like that's in your nature, that's just, you're built with this, like I'm just gonna protect you from yourself. That's the beauty of asking God to kill you, fill you, and send you, because now when you die every day, you can be filled with God's spirit, and now his life is living through you. That's the only chance we have. It's an interesting verse. Can I show it? Not Proverbs 19.3. I, I want you to see that. This is crazy. It says this. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness. And then watch this. Then they're angry at the Lord. <laughs> it was just, I can't believe it. How did I get here? God, it's all your fault. Was it really? The other thing I saw in this passage that was interesting, one of the main ways that the Israelites got twisted, got sideways, is when they got into the land, again, God said, steer clear from all these pagan nations and and all the other idols, remember? And and one of their tragic things is they, they imitated the people that were in the land. It's one of the greatest challenges, I'll speak for myself, that I have as a Christian right now in the world we live in, a pagan nation, don't be confused, this is not a God-fearing nation, this is a pagan, we have, we are, we've crossed the path now. And one of my struggles is I, I walk in this world that says, be successful and buy that and do that, and, and if I'm not careful, I get sucked into this materialism and what the world is pressing on me. And, and I think about, that, that's what's happening here. They, they walk into this land and God's like, no, no, no. Like, like, just stay clear from that. Keep on moving forward. And they get all wrapped up in it. Romans 12, two, jot this down. This is just a good reminder for us as believers. Again, remember, the heartbeat of God is for your best, for my best. It's, this is not to throw a salt in our game. Here's what he says. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. What's your worldview right now? Then you'll learn to know God's will, God's best for your life. It's good, pleasing, and perfect. Jesus said, be in the world, not of it. The end of this chapter, I'll show you this verse in verse 40, 2 Kings 17, 40. What, what happened, and this is what the Assyrians did, when they would conquer a land, they would take people, the home people, out of the land back to Assyria, a lot of them, except for the poor, and then they would take people from other lands and they'd repopulate the area with all these different people in, in, in the nation of Israel. And listen to what this says. The people would not listen and they continued to follow their former practices, so... It's like you have this mixed multitude of people from these pagan nations now getting into the land, God's promised land, and you see this picture. It's exactly what happens. So God repeated the warnings. God's people refused. Beep, beep. (laughs) Sing, sing. He continues to up the ante. So finally, what was the result? That's number three, verse 22. Skip down to verse 22. And the people of Israel persisted in all the evil ways of Jeroboam. Now you remember Jeroboam, when the nation of Israel first divided, Jeroboam became the king of the the northern area. And he was really threatened by the other kingdom, the kingdom in the south, Judah. So he set up these golden calves to worship there. And he said, y'all don't have to go down south. That's a long journey. You, should, you, know, you don't have to go down to Jerusalem. 
You, you can just worship here. And the sins of Jeroboam, it's interesting, is convenience, which I think is the same thing we struggle with today. Idolatry and convenience. They persisted in these evil ways. They did not turn from these sins until, here it is, the Lord finally swept them away from his presence in 722 BC, just as all his prophets had warned. So Israel was exiled from their land to Assyria where they remain to this day. Pause there real quick. It'd be like, I don't know, if Russia... Some, they, they come in and conquer the United States or Canada or something. I don't think Canada, Canada's pretty friendly, I guess. I don't know, but, and next thing you know, we're being deported. We're just on these planes back to Russia. We're on the plane naked, just sitting there, just like, just completely humiliated. I mean, picture yourself like that. And, and it's wild because Amos, when you, when you study, when you read Kings, read some of these prophets. Listen to Amos 4, verse 2. This is, this is fascinating. This is what God was, was warning through Amos. He said, the sovereign Lord has sworn by his holiness, the time will come when you'll be led away with hooks in your noses. Every last one of you will be dragged away like a fish on a hook. I'll just be honest with you, man. Like when, when, when God repeated the warnings and he's really graciously trying to get my attention and I'm refusing, like there's gonna come a point where it's gonna be painful and humiliating. <laughs> it's so, isn't it so sad? This great God, he's a great loving God. He's like, I love you guys. Here's how it works best. Beep, beep. And 95% of us, we take the free will and we just force that hand. And by the way, can I just say, some people right now, you are in exile right now. But could it be that this is actually the greatest season of your life because he's finally gotten your attention? As much as it stunk and how humiliating it was to get to the bottom, like literally flat on my back, and with a hook in my nose being, you know, dragged away. As bad as that was, it was actually the best season of my life because finally I said yes. All I'm all in, surrender. We talk about the vision of this church all the time and the five S's, what's the very first S? Surrendered. That's where it starts, this Surrender. This result, Proverbs 29, one says this. <laughs> You're like, I'm so glad I showed up to church for this one. Hey man, I'm just trying to do my job to hear from God and present it to you. Now you do what you want with it. I'm trying to share it with grace and tact. This is God's word. Proverbs 29, one. He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck, <laughs> stiff arms God, right, will suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Paul was trying to communicate this idea in the New Testament when he was writing to the Romans. And if you haven't read Romans, specifically chapter one recently, you might wanna just reread it because it's like, you know how they say history repeats itself? It's very, very, we have so many correlations with the world in Rome right now in the United States. And I just wanna read a couple, Romans chapter one, Verse 21, just jot it down. I just wanna read this to you. See if this sounds familiar with where we're at and specifically where I'm at. Like, let's, let's not just be pointing fingers. Let's take inventory. Listen to what it says. Yes, they knew God. You know, in, in earlier in the chapter in, in Romans 1, it talks about that God made it clear by creation that he's there. And he, we have like this inner knowing. We really know there's a God. So they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. I try to, th I try to thank God as much as I can. You've, here's your, you want some homework? Here, I'm giving you one homework, this is practical. When you fill up, anybody go to the gas station, you can actually fill your tank. You're not 15 anymore putting like $4 in it. Anybody? Just thank God. Like this is your homework, simple. Fill up your tank, thank God for it. God, thank you for a full tank, okay? 
They wouldn't even give him thanks. They began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a, what does it say? As a, as a result, their minds became what? Dark and confused. The mental health tragedy in our world right now, can I just lovingly say, it is stiff arming God. I'm gonna do it my way. Listen, we were never created on, to have life on our own, doing our own thing. We were created for a love relationship with the creator of the universe. And when we stiff arm God and we do things our own way, our mind becomes dark and confused. Look at 23. Look at the very couple, couple verses down. Romans 1, 23. Instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worship idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. In my case, it would be like a, looks like a Audi S5. Okay, I'm just giving you some ideas. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. This is the wild thing that I never can understand about God, the mystery of God. I'm gonna create man, I know how it works. I want relationship with them. I want to just experience love. But I, to do that, I got to give them complete free will. So with the free will, I'm going to do whatever I want, <laughs> shameful that my heart desired, as a, what does it say, as a? They did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. Ah. That hits me, man. That hits me. It brings me right back. How did I get here? It brings me right back to my bed. How did I get here? It was one step at a time. I was in a church just like this growing up. Mom wanted my best. One step at a time. No, the old gray-haired guy doesn't know what he's talking about. No, no. The pew, the wooden pew, this is all just, this is man-made religion, trying to cope with something. No, I'm gonna do my own thing. Actually, this feels way better. No, that came easy. I'm gonna do it my own way. One step at a, and little by little, then I get to the, how did I get here? weird now on this side of it I'm the weird preacher <laughs> that I was stiff arming and saying they're whack it's God's grace amen he's got something better if you're in that place God sent me here for this moment pray with me God thank you for the beauty of your grace the beauty of your Patience with us. I'm just thinking right now, someone's listening right now and they're literally hearing from heaven right now. They're like, oh my goodness, I thought that he was out to just beat me up and, and now they're having revelation that you were just trying to get their attention for this moment. So thank you, God. Thank you that you're so gracious, you're patient, and even now, would you do something spectacular? As you share your word, beep, beep. As your spirit is moving, as there's people that they, they've been in a season for a while and here they are. Your moment of embrace and pray today would be the day of salvation. In Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I wanna conclude with just a quick opportunity. For someone in here that you're like, man, I, that was a tough word, but I, for the first time, heard that God's got something better for me. And it makes sense. So let's stand together. I wanna to just conclude because it's possible there's some people in this auditorium 
you showed up for church and God's speaking to you. In a moment, the band's gonna play a song and we're just gonna create space right up front here for people to respond. I'm not sure what he's speaking to you. But the, the response that I would invite is humility. What did I say? The number one thing I think for humans, the one character quality that's really gonna help us in this life is humility. For you just to come, humble yourself before God. I'll lead you in a prayer. It's a very simple but profound prayer. God, I open up my heart. I invite you inside. I've been stiff arming you for, for far too many years. And today, I wanna move the stiff arm to hug you back, begin relationship. I need forgiveness. I need a new life. The Bible's clear, God's perfect, he's holy. He's gotta judge sin. That's the beauty of the gospel, isn't it? God's like, I don't want my people to have to pay for their sin. I'm gonna come down to a, this is wild. I'm gonna come to a planet, become one of them as a human, live the perfect life they couldn't, and then I'm gonna die for them. I'm gonna take all the penalty of that sin upon myself because of my great love. It's exactly what Jesus did. They killed him, they crucified him. He took the brunt of God's wrath on himself. They buried him, three days later he rose from the grave. It's the greatest news in the world. And because of belief in this good news and repentance, God, I'm not gonna do this my own way. No, no, I'm saying yes to you and I'm turning. Listen, God forgives you when we step into eternity. And he says, why should I let you in? You shouldn't, but guess what? I trusted in Christ to pay for my sin. Ding, 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 you're in. Heaven, eternity. Just like we got to celebrate with my grandpa this past week as he was graduated to heaven, not based on his good work, but based on his faith in Christ. Do you want that? That's the invitation. So if God's speaking to you, you can be listening online as well. God's speaking to you. This is a word that he spoke right through me to your heart for such a time as this. Stop stiff arming God, say yes, embrace him today. Amen, so if God's speaking to you, church, just begin to pray. If you don't absolutely have to be somewhere, please just, just pray for the person. There, there is souls at stake, there's generations at stake right now. Humble yourself before God, I'll lead you in the prayer help you, I'll connect you with some people as you begin the journey. Your walk away, knowing you're going to heaven, know you have been forgiven and you have a relationship with God, amen? So church, just begin to pray right now. Band, go ahead and play. If God's speaking to you, you come now, you come now. supposed to be here. Here's, here's how you know your heart's beating kind of fast. <laughs> and here's some questions you're asking. Well, if I, if I do this, what's next? I think so many people want to clean up their life and then come to God. Can I just lovingly say it's the reverse. You come to God and he'll work. He, he will give you the power over your addiction. He will change anger to peace and joy. I prom I've seen it time and time again. So without singing any longer, 
This is your day. You know it. You're thinking it's all over. It's not all over. God's got something for you. He's patient. You can be up in the nosebleeds. You can be on the floor. Don't wait another day. Come forward right here. Make a bold and yet humble statement. Say, God, I'm all in. Is there anybody here? Okay. Let's, let's pray for those listening online, very possible people tuning in from all over the world. If that's your heart position. You're part of this church. You tuned in, maybe it's your first time tuning in. God's speaking to you. He's not through with you. He's not angry. He, he's reaching out his hand. He's been trying to get your attention. So pray this prayer. After me, say, Lord God, I open up my heart. I invite you inside. I've decided today to follow you, Jesus. From this day forward, I'm yours. I'm all in. I want a fresh start. I'm so sorry for stiff arming you for so many years. Will you restore these years? The locusts have eaten. Fill me with your spirit. Lead me in a life of love for your glory and to help a ton of people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations.